This tutorial video will show you the build-up of a quick side view sketch of a city car using Corel Painter software and the Wacom drawing tablet. In a new document, on a separate layer, I place a side view image of a car. This will be the underlay. On top of it, a layer called Sketches Edit, in which I will do my line drawing. If you name the layer, you can easily find it back later on. Uh, decreasing the opacity of the underlay will enable me to both see the image and my line drawing on top of it. See? I will start with a black felt tip marker and draw the tires and the space around it to define the wheel arch. Using black is convenient as it can be used to draw both. This will better position the car body. A horizontal black line underneath the vehicle accentuates the surface it rests upon and suggests also a cast shadow. For line drawing I use a black digital airbrush set at a small size and large opacity. You can see that the lines are not definite and precise but really sketchy and this will enable you to search for the shape you have in mind and uh, will enable you to react on your sketch as well. Now I draw some quick lines. Uh, get a feel about what I'm going to do with the shape of the car and for keeping proportions I keep the underlay image inside. I want to keep the package of the car more or less intact so I will basically change the body of the car only. Switching the underlay on and off will enable you to judge your sketch and it is a good idea to do so every once in a while to see where you're headed and to better judge the proportions you have just uh, sketched. Don't worry about all these lines here. Later on you will have the opportunity to clean up your lines if you want. On top of that I will create a layer called marker. And here I use a, an orange color felt tip marker at full opacity. I define the darker areas at the bottom half of the car body and at the rear. Now these areas are darker due to the light coming from the, the chosen top left direction. Be aware that the outline of this side view is actually the center cross section of the car. So you will see a highlight at the front of the car and a darker area at the back due to the curvature of the front and back of the car body. Um, I use the marker like this, sketching quickly. And if I rearrange this layer underneath my sketch one, I don't have to bother about having to stay within the outlines as it is covered by the black areas automatically. From this point on, uh, you can continue shortly without the underlay image. Another layer I add is called airbrush. And using the same color, I set the airbrush now at a large size and only little opacity. And as I brush, I can build up a gradient uh, automatically. I am not touching the marker to create a glossy surface with a lot of contrast and a kind of horizon at daybreak effect. To aid the sense of depth, I add some extra marker at the lower parts of the car body and some white where the car body is oriented towards the light, such as just above the wheel arch where the car body bulges slightly. Then I add a layer called window, in which I will draw everything related to the windows. I start with making a precise selection of the window parts, and within that selection I can sketch all visible parts of the interior. I switch the underlay again, and this time to look for the A pillar, and here's the B pillar, the steering wheel, some of the dashboard and the driver's seat. Actually, all I can see through the windows. I sketch loosely and intuitively with a black felt tip marker. Then I airbrush lightly on top of it in a bluish color. Again, quite a large airbrush with small opacity, which will give me a gradient automatically. Immediately the effect of transparency can be seen. I 
I add some white to the interior and also a highlight to show that the windscreen is slightly curved towards the light source. Make sure to draw black also just within the outline of the windows to refer to the dark material you usually find there. It can be a good idea to save this selection so you can later on use it again when you for example want to blend in the background image. If I invert the selection it makes it easier to adapt the sketch near the windows without rearranging the windows themselves. This is an important step in the drawing as it will enable you to clearly see the proportions of the car body. Now I look for wheels to paste in the sketch. I open an image, make a circular selection for wheel and rim, crop it and duplicate the layer. To merge it into the drawing I also need to scale it down, um, which I should have done before duplicating. Ok, there's one for the rear and one for the front. As you can see now, the sketch and the image do not nicely fit together in terms of color and contrast. And by increasing the contrast of the images and diminishing the brightness, uh, they will fit in better in the sketch. If you make them rather dark, they will really blend in. Maybe it looks a bit static or unnatural to have two identical wheels. So you can, for example, rotate one of them for a more uh, spontaneous look. After this, I add one more layer. This layer is meant to clean up the sketch and define details. You can do this uh, very elaborately using path lines, of course, but here I will mainly stick to more accurately sketched lines by hand, because I want this to be an ideation sketch. So I choose the final outlines of the door, well, the benefit of this new layer is that you can, of course, eventually decide to erase the sketch lines underneath. Uh, or more important, you are now able to try out uh, different design details to see which one uh, suits your design best. Like the front and the rear lights. And I finalize the car body outline. Next to the black lines, you can also draw a white one for detailed highlights and some more highlights. With an airbrush, I loosely sketch some of the surrounding surface, suggestion of a reflection in it, and that's it. Eventually you can also combine it with a background image, for example.